So, as you probably know, uh, Jesus was executed and buried, but three days later, he rose from the dead. That rising is what we've been celebrating for the past six Sundays of the season of Easter. He rose from the dead, but 40 days later, he rose yet again. And the disciples watched him rise up into the heavens until a cloud hid him from their sight. And no matter how much Jesus had tried to prepare his friends for the day that he would leave them, I can only imagine that their minds were stuck somewhere between wow and what now? After all, for as long as the disciples had been followers of Jesus, they had been at his side, traveling with him, eating with him, praying with him, singing with him, asking him questions, sitting by his side, literally following him. What was left for them if Jesus was gone? How could they continue to follow Jesus if he wasn't there for them to follow? Could they do this alone? Would God even still hear them? Our Gospel reading this morning comes to us from the book of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. Hear now the word of the Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all the people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, Glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. The hour had come, the gospel tells us. The hour had come for the world to change again. The hour had come for the lives of the disciples to be thrown off course again. The hour had come for the location of the body of Christ to stop being a single place where Jesus physically stood and to become many places. Wherever there was faith, wherever bread was broken, wherever two or more or fewer were gathered, wherever he was needed. That hour came when Jesus ascended home to God. But that hour has come again, and that hour is here now. The disciples had never experienced anything like the sensation of watching their Lord and Savior rise up from the earth and disappear into the clouds. They had 
heard stories, of course. They knew that the prophet Elijah had been swept up to heaven in a fiery whirlwind in a fiery chariot pulled by fiery, fiery horses. But that was a long time ago and not the sort of thing that they ever thought they would live to see. The hour had come, the gospel tells us. We know that the world has been changing since the first moment of creation. We know that at any moment our lives could be thrown off course. The hour has come for the location of the church to stop being any single place and to become many places. That hour came when the congregation of the first followers of Christ was transformed. But that hour has come again, and that hour is here now. We had never experienced anything like living in a pandemic, sheltering in place, being separated from friends and family and community, living in the midst of such concrete fear of a virus. We had heard stories, of course. We knew that a virus had swept the globe a century ago, killing perhaps a hundred million people, but that was a long time ago, and not the sort of thing that we ever thought that we would live to see. And like the crowd 2,000 years ago, who stood in speechless shock and wonder as they watched Jesus be swept up into heaven, we too are still at many times lost for words. I'm sure that the crowd 2,000 years ago wanted to grab Jesus' ankles and anchor him down to earth because they knew it would be so much easier to have him with them than to continue to follow him once he was gone. But there is a difference between what is right and what is easy. And it wouldn't have been right to try to control or limit God, even if it might have made God easier to follow. Many people today are clamoring for worship to return to church buildings because it's so much easier to do things the way we've always done them than it is to struggle with new technologies and limitations and loneliness. There is a difference between what is right and what is easy, and it wouldn't be right to risk the spread of infection in an enclosed space full of vulnerable people, even if it might be easier to return to the comfort of familiarity. Jesus stopped being a physical human who lived and ate and slept among us, but he never abandoned us or stopped being with us. However hard it must have been to watch, or to remember, or to live past, the ascension was a miracle, not a misfortune, even if it might not have seemed that way at first. We will continue to worship God from our own homes for at least another five Sundays, but our church is not and has not at any time been closed. For centuries, the first Christians worshiped almost exclusively in their homes. Churches have become, over time, central and very convenient places for people to gather, to pray, to learn, and to share communion. But while those acts are important in shaping and sharing our faith, we are primarily called by God to love the world. And we are called to do that every day, not just Sundays, and in every place, not just our beautiful sanctuaries. It isn't easy what we have been asked to do being alone 
going without, interacting with loved ones over screens instead of dinner tables, staying home from work and school and everything that we would have called everyday life in the before times. But there are times in our lives when we are called to choose between what is right and what is easy. It is right to keep each other safe. Because even if numbers are going down, the more people we interact with, the greater the chance of being infected and unknowingly infecting someone else, and the longer this time of loneliness will have to go on. And it was right for the disciples to stand and watch Jesus ascend into heaven and leave them behind. Because once Jesus was no longer limited to being in only one place at a time, he was able to be in every place all of the time. He is with you now, wherever you are, whenever you are watching this video. He was with you the last time you were able to sit in the pews. He will be with you when you are able to return. He will be with you every moment in between and far beyond. And soon, the Holy Spirit will fly down and dance over our heads and sweep us up into her warm embrace. Because even in absence and unwanted change and hard times, God is doing new things and the church is being born.